If you've ever thought about building a smart home, you've probably come across the word Zigbee. Hey everyone, I'm Abe from Homey, and today I'll be telling you everything you need to know about Zigbee. We'll be going over what Zigbee is and how it works, and we'll also be having a look at the advantages and disadvantages when using Zigbee in your smart home. The Zigbee protocol is already more than 20 years old, and it was originally developed in the early 2000s. Back then, a few large companies came together and created the Zigbee Alliance. Together, they set out with a common goal, and that was to create an energy-efficient, reliable, wireless protocol that can be used in industrial automation, healthcare, but also in smart home automation. Well, how does it work? You might already be familiar with wireless protocols like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Well, just like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, Zigbee also works on 2.4 gigahertz. But the way it works is a bit different. Zigbee devices create a low-powered mesh network and can essentially be divided into two categories. On the one side, you have your Zigbee coordinator, which is your central hub that coordinates the whole network. That can be your Homey Pro, your Homey Bridge, or for example, your Philips Hue Bridge. And on the other side, you have Zigbee end devices, which are usually low-powered battery devices that connect to the coordinator's network. The Zigbee coordinator, on the one hand, connects to your Wi-Fi or Ethernet, and on the other side, it creates the Zigbee mesh network that the end devices can then join. Zigbee end devices come in two flavors. On the one side, you have battery power devices, and on the other side, you have continuously powered devices. For battery power devices, like a motion sensor, for example, after they connect to your Zigbee network, they will put their antenna in standby mode. So the antenna will do nothing, essentially. As soon as the motion detector then detects motion, it will wake up the antenna again, connect to the network, and send the command, hey, I have detected motion. That way, the coordinator knows that motion has been detected, and afterwards, the motion detector will go back to sleep. This is different, for example, than how a Wi-Fi device would work, which is continuously connected to the network. This also means that a battery-powered Zigbee N device can last a really long time on their batteries. Most battery power devices will last to over a year on a single battery. On the other side, you also have the continuously powered Zigbee devices, like a light bulb, for example, or a smart plug. These devices continuously get power and just don't really need to worry about their power usage. A big advantage of these continuously powered devices is that they will help extend the Zigbee network. So the coordinator creates the initial network and afterwards these Zigbee powered devices can extend that network. That's essentially what a mesh network is. As soon as you connect a continuously powered Zigbee N device to your Zigbee network, it will help extend its network and it will pass through every command that gets sent to or from the Zigbee coordinator. So let's say you want to connect a motion sensor but it's a little bit too far away from your Zigbee coordinator, you can put a Zigbee power device in between and it will pass through the device as soon as motion is detected. These devices are called Zigbee routers, which is a bit confusing since usually a router is the device on the network that coordinates a network. Well, not for Zigbee. A Zigbee router simply is a device that helps route the traffic in your Zigbee network. So, how do you connect your Zigbee end device with your Zigbee coordinator? Usually, if you have a Wi-Fi device, you have an interface where you can select the network, put in a password, plus connect, and you're connected. Well, with Zigbee, that works a bit differently. What you first need to do is you need to put your Zigbee coordinator into Zigbee pairing mode. For Homey, you need to go to add a new device, press Zigbee, and then your Homey will be in Zigbee pairing mode. Afterwards, on your Zigbee end device, you also need to enable pairing mode. And this can work a bit differently for different devices. For some devices, there's a button. For other devices, you need to turn it on and off again for six times. It all depends, but it usually it's stated in your device's manual, or for Homey, it is usually mentioned during the pairing process. Since you don't need to put in a password during the pairing process, you might ask yourself, is this safe? Well, it's good to mention that every Zigbee connection is encrypted. So yes, all your data is safe. Lastly, what is good to mention is that Zigbee devices don't always need a Zigbee coordinator to function. If you go to IKEA, for example, 
and you buy one of their Zigbee bulbs together with one of their Zigbee remotes, the two can also be connected directly to each other via a Zigbee binding. In this case, if you press a button on the remote, it will directly be sent to the light bulb. It's good to mention here is that next to the connection that they have with each other, they can also be connected to a Zigbee coordinator like Homey at the same time. So now that you know what Zigbee is and how it works, let's have a quick look at what the advantages and disadvantages are of using Zigbee in your smart home. One of the biggest advantages of Zigbee is that it uses very little power. As we mentioned before, when you get a battery powered Zigbee device, it can last up to over a year on a single battery. This is because Zigbee was built from the ground up to use as little power as possible. One of the disadvantages of this relatively low power usage is the available bandwidth. While most Wi-Fi devices have thousands of megabits available, Zigbee caps out at 250 kilobits. So that's perfectly fine if you want to send a command that a window has been opened or that motion has been detected, but it's less optimal for streaming full camera streams, for example. Another big advantage of Zigbee is the mesh networking that we talked about before. This means that if you have a large home, you can spread some Zigbee routers throughout the home to help extend the coverage of your Zigbee coordinator. This means that you will have decent coverage no matter where you are in your home. Another disadvantage of Zigbee is that it uses the same 2.4 gigahertz as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth devices. That means that if you're in a very crowded area, or if you live in a very busy apartment building, there might be a bit of interference with other Wi-Fi and Bluetooth devices in the area. One of the biggest advantages of Zigbee might be the availability of the devices. Since Zigbee is fairly cheap to integrate for a manufacturer, you'll find plenty of devices available for purchase. You might see some motion sensors, contact sensors, smart plug, plant sensors, whatever you name it, there's probably one available. This also has a turn side though. Since Zigbee is a fully open protocol, not every manufacturer implements Zigbee in the same way. Even though the Zigbee Alliance does a lot of effort to standardize the Zigbee protocol, there are still many manufacturers that just tweak it a bit or implement stuff in another way than it was meant to. So before buying a Zigbee end device, always make sure to check if it works with your Zigbee coordinator. For Homey, this is pretty easy to do. Just go to the Homey app store, search for the brand you are trying to pair, and you'll know it works with Homey. One of the last advantages I want to mention about Zigbee is that it works fully locally. Of course, this is also dependent on how your coordinator works, but the Zigbee connection between your end device and the coordinator will always work fully locally. What's good to mention here as well is that a Zigbee end device can only be connected to a single coordinator at a time. That means that if you have a Philips Hue bulb that's connected with a Philips Hue bridge, it cannot be connected to a Homey Pro at the same time. If you want them to work together in this case, you need to connect your Philips Hue bridge with Homey Pro. And that might be one of the biggest disadvantages of Zigbee. It can only talk to the internet if it's connected with a coordinator. If you would have just bought a Wi-Fi bulb, it could have connected to the internet directly, and it could probably also connect with multiple platforms at the same time. So it all depends a bit on what you are looking for. Are you looking for relatively affordable devices that work well on batteries and work fully locally? Then Zigbee might be the right option for you. But what are your other options? Maybe Z-Wave or Matter or Thread or Infrared or 43 megahertz. There are loads more other protocols that you can use in your smart home. And we'll be making videos about all of them. So stay tuned for those videos and have fun building your smart home. See you in the next video.